Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video, I'm quickly going to show you how you can use K3D to spin up Kubernetes cluster locally. So K3D is a tool which is built on top of K3S, which is a Rancher's lab minimal Kubernetes distribution. So Rancher, if you don't know, is like a container runtime similar to Docker. So they have built a minimal Kubernetes distribution that you can build in your local system and you probably don't have to spin up Kubernetes cluster in cloud or maybe like if you want to just play around with Kubernetes, right? So this is a very good tool to do that. Uh, you can actually spin up like multi-node cluster with K3. So let's just go to installation. So you can, there are like, they've given a script how to install it. You can use either wget or curl. Uh, there are other installation methods as well. So on Mac, you can use this, brew install. Right, so for different architecture, they've given different installation method, but uh, this script uh, basically works for me. So I have installed K3D. So if I just do K3D, so these are all the commands which I get, right? So now I'm going back to documentation again, I'll go to guides and K3D cluster create. So this is the command which you use to create cluster. And you can also like, in if you are running Kubernetes on cloud, right? EKS or AKS, you create pods, you create services, and you probably access those services on the browser or I mean outside world, right? So you can do the same thing with KT, K3D as well. Uh, with K3D, you can imagine like running a Kubernetes cluster on top of Docker. So let me just go to exposing service and I need to open, so yeah, so this is. So K3D is basically, this is your host system, right? On top of that, you are running Docker runtime, right? And within Docker, you create containers, which will serve as nodes for your Kubernetes cluster, which we are going to create with K3D. And within this Docker container, we are going to run our pods, which are nothing but container again, right? So this is K3D is basically Docker in Docker concept. So you are basically running container within the container. So that's that's what K3D is, right? All right, so let me just delete this. Okay, and go back to, so I'm going to use this command to create a cluster because what this is doing, it's basically exposing my host port 8081 to or basically mapping my host port 8081 to port 80 of the load balancer node. So once we create this cluster, probably then you'll understand what is a load balancer node. So let's just copy this command and K3D create. Uh, basically this API port is not required. And I think they have mentioned that also that this is not required. I don't want that. We just run this. So this will take maybe a couple of minutes, but you can see that API port is not required for this example to work. So port mapping, let's read this. This is very important. So map port 8081 from my host, like I said, to the host port 80 on the container which matches the node filter load balancer, right? So basically it will spin up a container and put a filter or put a label to it as load balancer. So this is going to match that filter and it's going to map port 80 on that uh, container to port 8081. So basically it's like Docker map, uh, Docker mapping, port mapping. So suppose if I am running a Docker container, right? So if something like example, so my cluster is created. So I'll just need to explain this, that Docker run, when you do something like Nginx, right? And then you port map. So 8080 to say 80. So this is what something similar we are doing, right? There. So my cluster is created. And if I do kubectl get uh, nodes. So you can see I've created two worker node and one server node. And these are nothing but Docker container. So if I do Docker PS, so you can see all these bunch of containers. So they are acting as nodes. All these are K3D nodes, right? All right, so let's go back to this. Uh, load balancer node filter matches server LB and deployed. So this server LB is deployed in front of clusters, all the clusters node, right? So again, K3D 
mm, node ls right so this is the server lb node and this is this has basically the role of load balancer and the port 80 on this particular node exposes all the other nodes as well right so any request which goes to port 80 on this will be redirect so this is basically acting as a proxy you can just understand in simple words so this is like a proxy so if you ha hit port 80 on this and then the service is running on any of these nodes uh, your request would be directed to those right as simple as that okay so cluster is created so now we are going to look at this example itself k3d uses traffic as an ingress controller so ingress controller is already deployed for you you just need to basically deploy an ingress so let's quickly do kubectl create deployment nginx and this is like a simple nginx deployment you can see it created quickly again now we are going to create a cluster ip for this and we are just going to map it to port 80 a service of type cluster ip so if you do kubectl get pods so this is all deployed in default namespace right kubectl get service so this is our service and this is a pod and this is like docker within docker so we are running a docker container within the docker container and we'll just copy this file we'll create my ingress.yaml insert it and this is what we are creating an ingress resource so ingress controller is already deployed but you need to create an ingress resource and we are telling that i need to access the service via ingress which the service name is nginx and the port it is running on is 80. And this is basically you will find in the documentation in exposing service so there are two methods via ingress and then via node port but ingress is recommended so we will use ingress right now we'll just do kubectl apply my ingress.yaml ingress is created so if now i try to curl this we should see the nginx welcome page so this is how you basically access your services if you are deploying this on those on your k3d cluster if you don't want to ac access those if you just want to test some pod deployment and deploy uh, pod deployment or deployment deployment you can i mean simply just create your yaml files and do a kubectl apply so this is like a quick quick overview of how k3d is I mean how k3d is beneficial because you it avoid basically prevents you or saves you the time of deploying clusters in cloud and, and there are like bunch of other things which are required to deploy along with the cluster like nginx controller and stuff like that so it saves you all that effort and you can quickly have a kubernetes cluster running depending upon how many nodes you need you can actually so if you want say k3d cluster create and you can use agents say I want a five node cluster so I can just give five agents as five node cluster and it will create a five node cluster and the cube config is by default populated so anytime once the cluster is created so it will take like a couple of minutes you can see it's starting a new cluster lb node and lb node it will always create okay so cluster is created and if the cube ctl is automatically populated to the default cube config you have a uh, cube config so cube ctl get nodes so you can see you are always pointing to the cluster which you have created ah so you can always see you are always pointed to the cluster you have created and then you can do k3d delete oh no not delete cluster delete cluster delete my new cluster the cluster is gone so that's that's how basically k3d work and that's all I wanted to cover for this video. It was a quick overview of how K3D works. I hope you find this tool uh, helpful. I find this tool very useful. 
whenever I want to test out something, uh, not exactly accessing services because uh, you can see, I mean, it, you have to create an ingress resource and stuff like that. So that becomes a little complicated. I mean, I prefer doing that on the actual cluster where already all this stuff is deployed. So yeah, that's all I wanted to cover for this video. I hope you guys like this video. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching.